All right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. I am Chester C. Busby III, and you are watching comics, or listening and watching, to Comics News Today. And uh, we got some interesting articles uh, going on about here today. And, of course, uh, big news is uh, Facebook. Boy, uh, it's having some problems. It's down completely for me. It sounds like some people are uh, having coverage and some aren't. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, we're going to press on here, and uh, hopefully uh, we can get some more people in here. Uh, if you guys of course, as uh, more and more people come in, if uh, we can get you guys sharing it out, it will help a lot, particularly on today, because, you know, uh, a lot of our people come over from fa uh, Facebook, uh, and of course, we're not having that uh, functioning today. Um, and uh, you, as you see, uh, we're joined by a bunch of people, and um, uh, let's go say hi to them. Uh, of course, keep in mind all those links down below, too. Uh, but first, I'll come over here to George. Hello, George. Greetings. Greetings, everybody. Uh, it's a wonderful time to be here. It's a wonderful time to be here today. No, I think so. Um, I have a beautiful day. We've had some really killer weather over in my area. Now, for the local people, it's a bit cold, but I love it, personally. Uh, how was the weather like today uh, over where you are? Uh, in Toronto, it's, uh, it's melting the snow. That is why it's such a great day. Oh, I see. I see. See, I, I miss snow. I don't get it as much. And I know this am amazing hot topic that we have where we talk about the weather. But, hey, it's important, okay? And we're a bunch of old dudes, oh. all right? We like talking okay. about the weather hey. watching the History Channel. So stop. You know, you gotta, it's, it's funny. I went to this restaurant called Karma. Mm -hmm. and they don't have a menu. But what they do have is they give you the meal that you deserve. Sweet. <laughs> what do I deserve today, George? <laughs> a helping of a bunch of apples. <laughs> oh my goodness um, and and of course we do forgive you for being Canadian, but you know it's okay. It's all right. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you're you. welcome. Uh, we're also joined by uh, amazing artist uh, Bill Hart. Uh, now Bill and I, of course, are in the Tales from Beyond the Gate uh, project together, and uh, we're working on our own story uh, called Manticore, huh, Bill? That's right, and this is a teasing for everybody. This is page two from the story that Chester and I are doing called Manticore. So I'll be working on that tonight during the show. Ooh, look, and there's perspective, correct perspective even. Amazing. That's right. Three-point yeah. perspective even. That's yeah. an awesome teaser. That is an awesome teaser. Yeah, it is cool. Uh, it's a This is a really fun story, too. It's um, it's one of those stories. Uh, we were kind of talking about this a little bit earlier and uh, how to craft a story, right? Storytelling in, in and of itself. And... Um, you know, when you're when you're trying to tell a story, a, a lot of people we've noticed um, uh, are these days they just go for raw shock value, and, they, and this isn't talking about just comic books. It's talking about movies and TV stuff. This is one of the things behind why so much stuff sucks today, because everyone's like, "Why is this suck? Why isn't this good? Why is this and that?" It's because they don't know how to tell a story. They just want to shock you with this thing or this political thing, and you you can do politics uh, wet properly. But they don't know how because they never do the buildup. You have to create that innuendo, that metaphor, that tension that leads you into some reveal. You can't just throw it at people, right? And uh, this story in particular of uh, uh, the ones I've worked on for um, uh, Tales from Beyond the Gate, this one does that really well, I think. I, I think. What, what do you think, Bill? Did, I, did, did we pull that off? Yeah, yeah. It builds up all the way. Yeah, every every page is building up to to the ending, and that's a great ending. So yeah, it's a uh, it's it's, a it's pacing, right? It's about pacing it is. and tone, um, and uh, of course, adding amazing visuals to it is a whole other thing. And I love how you're creating uh, these nice little scripts for the narration uh, drops, and oh, it's it's wonderful. Uh, but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing this done. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for joining us today, Bill. And of course, we're also yeah, thanks for having. Me. Oh, no, absolutely, dude. Uh, we're also joined by the Danelli Lama himself. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. So what you were talking about is that they pre-ejaculate. That's, that's basically what you're saying, that they can't, they don't know any foreplay. So they just say, hey, here you go, everything all at once. No, yeah, no, no, no foreplay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, a good story is like a, I was going to say a good story is like a crock pot, not a microwave. You know, that's right. You gotta no, get that's, that. That's right. Get get those flavors going. Yeah, and it yeah. makes me feel bad for the young generation that must be having horrible sex. No foreplay. God damn, that sucks, man. Form ruined them. 
Yeah, that porn ruined them. Oh wow, yeah, that's you know that's one thing. It's uh, interesting. It's uh, with the internet. I never would have guessed that to be uh, something that happened, especially with this movement of uh, this feminine feminist movement. You would think there would be less porn, uh, but it is everywhere. Uh, you do your best to keep it from your kids and stuff like that, but it's a losing battle, I guess. Um, anyway, let me go over the chat and say hello to everybody. Uh, we got Roger Heller in here. He says, hello, how's everybody doing? And thank you for welcoming me today. Dude, you are most welcome. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, he says, uh, that was a fantastic live yesterday about inking. Hope you get another fantastic guest to learn about some, uh, some in living color. Oh, I see. Um, uh, yeah, no, we want to get a good colorist. We're working on that. Um, and, uh, thank you very much. That was a killer show. Um, and, um, you know, it was just the knowledge coming out of art was impressive. Um, but that's, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to getting the right guest who has something to offer, I guess. Uh, we've had all different kind of guests on this show. And we're very, very happy and, and, and proud, uh, to, uh, have been able to bring that to you guys. So thank you very much. Uh, Joshua, our most uh, favorite uh, troll is here, and uh, he says, Hail Raven, I blame Star Starfire Week for Facebook being out. It's probably true. It's probably true. And I haven't seen your sock puck puppets in a while. What's going on, man? I, I feel I, li I feel left out when I don't get all the sock puppets of the Joshua. Uh, anyway, we have uh, Model 3 here. He says, good evening. Good evening to you. Vail Nin is here. Hail Raven, uh, at least. <laughs> well, hail to you, Vail uh, Nick W is here. He says, hi, everybody. Uh, and uh, Ev uh, uh, Valen says, EVS is back to taking down his live streams almost immediately before many of us get a chance to watch. Why is he doing that? That seems odd. Counterproductive. Because people are, they're doing mass flagging. Oh, and, 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 uh, uh, technically, let me, let me interrupt here. Uh, technically, mm -hmm. yes, I said this publicly. Um, he, if someone doesn't watch the two hour whole, the event, the entire two hour event, uh, YouTube will take it as a as a thumbs down, and that's not a good thing. So um, people usually, you know, cut out before the end of the show, and that's why. Oh. So he always always has his smaller videos, which people see end to end, and that's a positive impact on YouTube. Oh well, yeah, no, but it 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 also can. Uh, I get what you're saying, but it's not that impactful. I mean, for instance, our channel, which we have a small channel, is worth 545 of us over here subbed, right? Which mm -hmm. we appreciate all of you. Um, and uh, but uh, on Social Blade, we're we're like ranked a C, and we have pretty good numbers over there, huh? Huh, Denali? Yeah, yeah, which is kind of surprising, which means it's not really the um number of subs that you have but the quality of contents that you're putting in there content that's right. and the uh and the the timeliness and all those and, kind of things yeah that's interesting though thank you Vanley, for letting us know and of course uh our, our warm wishes go out to evs today because uh we do we do know we had a car accident yesterday uh so we hope that uh he's fine and uh and and he'll uh it sounds like he is. He's still streaming and everything. So, uh, but uh, just still, you know, warm wishes out to him because uh, you know car accidents are always troubles. Well, he's he's, he's yeah. a lot of kicking, and uh, he uh, got Cyber Frog, you know, a third offering up and running at twelve o'clock today, well, Eastern Standard Time. There you go. Cool. Uh, we have Dilla Draws in here, which, dude, I still like the other name better, man. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, Denali is super inappropriate. Boo on Denali for his potty mouth. Well, there you go. Potty mouth. I didn't curse. No, it's usually what, me. What cursing occur? <laughs> what cursing uh, has occur? He kills no the list, John. <laughs> yes. Fun, a fun fact for everyone John uh, Diller. Uh, is the first person to ever draw Joe King other than me. Oh, wow. That's cool. In the last, since my creation, 1998. Yeah, but what did what did he do with it, though? See, that's what worries me. Yeah. 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 It, was, it, was a, it was a good illustration. I mean, um, the, the pose had something a little risque, if yeah, you uh, want to uh, really. See, 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 John. Mm -hmm. See, I'm all right, dude. <laughs> see. Um, anyway, um, uh, let me see, uh, uh, model three says, uh, that's because the left makes all the porn yeah, weird, huh? Uh, hairy porn, I guess. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> says, yeah, his big relaunch with, uh, with the old gang, uh, starring, uh, starring has been uh, taken down already. Oh, that's too bad. Um, but, um, 
Well, it is what it is. The world we live in. Uh, Nick W says, "I learned something from Uncle Art. Chester is a fraud. His first name is Buster." There you go. There you go. You caught me. It's out in the open. Well, uh, my... <laughs> but his middle name is Cornelius. So it that's is Cornelius. God, you guys just can't lay off that, huh? I am Chester Cornelius Busby the Third. Deal with it. All right. Uh, model three. <laughs> the yep. sad thing is, he's the third. He's not even the first. No, I'm I come from third. The... Diversity and Dillard. <laughs> Good idea, Vail, uh, Vail I like it. Uh, all right. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into our news today and uh, try to cover some of this. Let me share over here with the panel, of course. And uh, right. we got some interesting news here. This first one I'm going to uh, read through a little bit. Not that it's very interesting, but it's funny. Uh, this one's from me, actually. So uh, right. but go ahead and read the headline, dude. Sure, and aloha, everyone, as you listen, drive safely. Hey, Edwin, Natalie Portman gets restraining order against Colorado men claiming to be John Wick. All right, then. Awesome. <laughs> so what, do we, what does this you know, mean? I'd be, I, I would be impressed if, if the guy actually was able to <laughs> know how to be uh, – as as a as a great fighter as Keanu Reeves, maybe a little bit scary, but that'd be awesome. But no, basically it's like, well, why are you going after Natalie Portman? She has no connection to John Wick. Um, Probably too many edibles there in yeah. Colorado. Well, maybe, maybe. Yeah. possibly the the too many marijuana. Yeah, uh, but uh, John Wick is a fictional character portrayed by Keanu Reeves in two movies, as well as a comic book series, which is horrible, horrible. Do not read that comic book series. Uh, there is a planned third movie that will hit theaters this May, as well as a prequel television show. Wow, we need that because, you know, the whole mystique of him getting out and the Baba Yaga, we don't want to ruin that. No. Oh, goodness. The Continental. Uh, the franchise follows Wick, a retired assassin, who gets back in the game after his beagle is murdered. He enacts brutal revenge on those who have wronged him. Okay, that's not nice, but that doesn't tell me what happened. Thank you very much. According to The Blast, the restraining order lasts for five years and bars him from coming within 100 yards of her, her husband, and their two children. Okay. Uh, the police report obtained by The Blast reveals the man rang her doorbell multiple times. When he, he was engaged via an intercom system, he remained silent. When police arrived on the scene, the man identified himself as John Wick, even though officers had his Colorado driver's license, which confirmed his true identity. Not only did the man claim he was John Wick, but he reportedly told the officer that he had spoken to the reporting person several times uh, telepathically and that he had traveled from Colorado to Los Angeles to meet the individual. Officers in indicate he and he, uh, <laughs> the man, uh, did not respond to his name on the driver's license, but he did respond when they called him John. They also indicated his response were limited and delayed. Yeah, he was high off his butt, right? Following encounters, the man was placed in a mental hold, and law enforcement officers requested a firearm restraining order against him, which was granted. Of course it was. Of course it was. Can't have no gun in no one. He's, he's got what? He's John yeah, Wick. Yeah. He's John Wick. All right, so this is fine. Obviously, leave these people alone. Natalie uh, Portman is an absolute horrible actress, but she can, she doesn't, she deserves to have a peaceful life. But this is some drugged out guy, and he rang a doorbell. You know, creepy. Okay, whatever. Uh, but um, I just thought it was funny. Yeah, you, well, you got to be careful with that because you never know. Mm. You know, if he had other attentions and he was ringing the doorbell to, you know, see. If she'll answer the door, because I think wasn't back in the 80s, uh, another guy, you know, rang the doorbell and shot this actress so he yeah. could she could be his spirit wife Dorothy or whatever. Wow. Dorothy. Yeah. Crazy people. Man. But, you know, this brings up yeah. a whole whole other conversation, though, which I'm not going to get into a deep here. But uh, there's a whole thing that's uh, from from where I sit here looking uh, back to the West. Um, I, I have maybe a, a better you know, a better perch to see what's going on. And one thing I've noticed is the mental health of the Western world is very poor. There's a lot of crazy ass bastards out there right now. Um, and it's not just HGWs, it's all over the place. And it's, it's interesting how, how the mental health of the West itself seems to have degraded. And I'm kind of wondering why that has happened. Um, Cause we don't it's, even have insane asylums anymore. No, it's not degraded. It's more that we have more awareness than before. Before we would chalk it up to, you know, abnormal behaviors 
or you know it happened in this part of the world and nobody heard about it but because we have the internet we have tv and cable it becomes more prevalent mm-hmm. um and the fact that it's like you know it's always been there it's just not touched upon because of scandals or because of you know what other people would think a shame a uh, shame of it and you know they don't see mental health as, as a priority um for a lot of people and then we get tragedies you know that occur on there well, and everybody's I, outraged it's like how could this happen and be like yeah but see i think a lot well, of people are also not recognizing in fact uh supporting uh mental illness when they see it for instance transgenderism it is mental disease right now that doesn't mean that we they can't live in our society we can't uh, they can't be amongst us but we all we must understand and, and and retain the understanding that that is a mental disease it is there's something that has gone us uh, gone awry in their head right whether it be biological or not um and uh, we 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 refuse to accept these things and um uh, just like this huge acceptance on media and stuff for pedophilia it's unacceptable we don't accept that and and it comes down to you know uh, this whole uh, skewing of the lines between acceptance and tolerance actually uh and uh, you know well i i think one of the failings with mental health um speaking about that it's a lot of self-reporting um, a lot of psychiatrists and a lot of uh, therapists and a lot of experts, you know, base their finding, base their diagnosis on the patient self-reporting, you know, for obvious reason, mm-hmm. but they don't go further into investigating exactly what's going on with, you know, other sources. Yeah. Well, and you know, unfortunately, you know. Yeah. And it, it, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> and, and the problem with it is, is that psychiatry yeah. is not science. It's not. Unfortunately, it, it would be nice if we understood the mind better, but we don't. It's you know we, we you see these scientists go on and pontificate upon how amazing and they understand this topic or another, which they don't. It's full of, they're full of it, right? Uh, but psychiatry is like the the least known thing we have. We don't know anything. Uh, to be honest, there is no evidence whatsoever that we have that mental illness even exists. We don't even have any biological evidence for it. Even though we know it exists, we can see the crazy bastard running down the street naked, right? Uh, but we don't well, know there's the, there's scientifically. Some, there's some proof to there's some proof to genetic dispositions now. No, there and is a lot isn't of that there. has been mapped. I've been following oh, yeah, this. There There's is. a lot of people saying stuff, but it's not true, dude. Now, we know there is. Obviously, obviously there is. But, the, but my point is we don't have the scientific where, wherewithal to, uh, to actually diagnose and actually treat. We don't. It's hit and miss. It's uh, these cocktail chemistry things that work on one person, don't on another. It's, it's, it's basically shamanistic science right now. That's what we're dealing with. All right. Right. And based on learning that a lot of these peer reviews are supposed to be by peers are done by graduate students. Yeah. And, you know, not, not even that, it makes me suspect, unfortunately, the credibility of a lot of these research. Yeah. Well, and it's a, it's a, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not um, demeaning. I'm saying we need more. And I, don't, I just don't right. think we have the science. Uh, the, we're not there yet where we can really break yeah. down the understanding of the brain chemistry. Um, uh, but I want us to be because it's quite obvious that mental illness is real. It's obvious. We just we just not there yet. And uh, they're just going to have to keep trying the uh, communicative things and trying all these cocktails and find out which works for you and et cetera, et cetera. And then you throw in the whole problem with the pharmaceutical companies, which are a real bunch of asses. Right. Those guys are, are abusive and criminal in their action, which doesn't make things better. It makes it worse. Uh, that's a whole nother conversation that has nothing to do with comic <laughs> yeah. books. Right, right, right. Let's move on, move on, moving on. But I do agree uh, with you, Model 3. John Wick would have had a fake ID. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly, right? So that the cops didn't know. They just they weren't smart enough to realize that, that they, they were talking to John Wick, but they had the fake ID. I get yeah. it. Um, but yeah, I appreciate all the information on the... Uh, like people are actually interested in that conversation. Uh, Night Pope says, uh, since so many mentally ill people uh, take medication, uh, those who may not have bred 
in the past have been able to, and those genes get passed down. Uh, that's true. And once again, we don't know what those genes are doing. Uh, it's a fair point. Uh, Model 3 says, mental illness is 50% in the West. Dude, it's bad. Uh, it's really bad, the things I see people do. They say the illogic of people. Um, and understand, this is not a political thing, right? It's not. A lot of people say, oh, SJWs, especially on our side, because we tend to be more libertarian conservatives, I guess, over here, or, or, or classical liberals. Uh, but it's not actually political, man. I've seen plenty of people that fa fall into every kind of political uh, demographic you could imagine acting like SJWs. It's, it's not, uh, it's not uh, limited to the progressives. Um, let me see here. John says, Chester, the lax restrictions on uh, degenerates have allowed people like Denali to flourish. See, there you go. John, John's on it. <laughs> well, yeah. it takes crazy to deal with crazy. That's true. Uh, Come Book Bob says, psychiatry is still classified as pseudoscience to this day. Yeah, it is, dude. I mean, I hope one day it won't be. I mean, it, but it, it, it is what it is. We have to be honest about it. Um, uh, Nick W says, I do agree with Model 3. John Wick would have had a fake ID. Chester Busby, 2019. Yeah, see? 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 Let's move on to actual comic book news, though. Uh, let me <laughs> see. What's this one here? Oh, yeah, this one. This one's cool. Go ahead, Danelli. All right. After meeting with Kevin Feige, Legion's, so Sci uh, FX Legion creator Noah Hawley uh, provides update on Dr. Doom's movie. He turned in the script. He talked to Kevin Feige and he's being coy whether, you know, they're going to do a movie or not. And that's basically the update of that article. <laughs> right. No, I know. Um, uh, this is here more to talk about the idea of a Dr. Doom movie. Um, now, mm -hmm. um, <sighs> goodness. Um, now the Fantastic Four, when the first movie came out, I thought it was okay. I kind of enjoyed it. It was really hated on, uh, but it did touch on, in its essence, it touched on the Fantastic Four. It did. Uh, the second one was not as good, although it had some parts in it that were actually better. And then the third one, which was actually a reboot, was a just a sheer disaster. And, of course, that's a good example of uh, uh, too many cooks in the kitchen and them not letting that young uh, director just do his thing, right? Um, so uh, we haven't had a lot of success. And to be honest, the Roger Corman Fantastic Four was more entertaining than the other ones. If you guys have ever seen oh, yeah. that, uh, seen the Roger oh, Corman. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, um, you got, now you got that theme song stuck in my head. <laughs> but, um, uh, heaven, you know, oh, Roger Corman films are good. Now, that's a dude who can spend a penny. Uh, Roger Corman's amazing at making low budget things really fun and entertaining. Uh, he's a true master of that. But anyway, um, I guess the conversation is how do you do the Fantastic Four properly in a movie or TV setting? How, how do you, how do you pull it off? Because they haven't done it correctly yet. They haven't been able to bring it, um, to us in the right way. And I have my opinion, but I'd like to hear yours. Well, I think they did it the right way in the Incredibles. So That's that was pretty much, a, that was kind of a clone. I mean, that was essentially the, the premise of the Fantastic Four was the adventuring family. So, <clears throat> and I know the Incredibles has a lot of different themes to it than the, than the FF would, but fundamentally it, it's pretty similar. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. And that's, that was some of the, the family appeal to it and in, in characterizing people to be more entertaining. The FF, man, they're just, they're just dry in the theater. They're just totally dry. All right. There's just no, there's no, I don't even want to, you can't even engage with that. It's just, they're so boring. All right. Well, there you go. Do the Incredibles version. All right. What about you, George? Um, I think the problem is that they're trying too hard to incorporate the FF in the current uh, time and in, in our history, like uh, presently. Mm -hmm. yep. And my suggestion would be that it's it's a very simple thing to th uh, to do is you you start the the movie in the '60s for the first uh, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm which is basically their origin story. You know, it's a space race. They get on a, a ship, they rocket, they get bombarded, they crash land, they become the Fantastic Four. Their first, um, you know, their first test is the negative zone. They go into the negative zone, they have their adventure, and then when they come out, 
lo and behold, they lost 50 years of their life. Well, that would be one way to stick with the continuity because, you know, the continuity states very clearly that there is no Fantastic Four uh, because otherwise, because the Fantastic Four is a very public supergroup, right? Uh, They're not very private or secretive. So that's a fair point. That's a good way to do it. Uh, What what do you think, uh, Donnelly? Well, I think the issue is, is having those family ties. And one of the things is we didn't believe that they were a family that's that's the problem there's you know belief that you know hey everybody is a family you know they're get along and everything but the movies that you mentioned they're not a family there's like individuals who are kind of stuck together and got superpowers so they don't even deal them as a a complete unit and family and kind of i kind of agree with um bill where he's saying you know you have to build them as a family first before you can give them superpowers because before that if you don't have those dynamics and you don't figure out you know what makes them tick because they're the they're marvel's first family then you're it's, it's not going to matter you know whether how well the cgi is done how well the story is because you're not going to believe you know they're going to be sincere there's no sincerity that's i guess that's what i'm getting there's no sincerity you know I see. if anybody else play um look at um chris uh, robert dowling jr as tony stark there's some sincerity in his work he was awesome for that same thing with uh chris evans with uh captain america mm-hmm. he has sincerity and that's that's been the difference that's been the been making a lot of a uh, Marvel's movie work. Yeah, but it's to, a sincerity to be fair, and... that's an acting point, not a script point. Right. But it it helps. It helps. It helps a lot. Yeah, to have a good it's... actor. Yeah, I agree. Right. Uh, <laughs> um okay. And so... that's, not, but but not, not even that. It's really the vision because they the director or the team had a vision that this this is the right person. This is, you know, the vision that will make it work click. And that's the problem that these people didn't know what they had. You know? Yeah, no, I agree and with that were... for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let me check the chat. Then I'll, I'll give my opinion real quick, but uh, let me check the chat. Uh, Come book. Bob says doom needs to be a, uh, largely a mystery. Uh, his connections, connections to Richard has to be their time at the university. And that this, uh, this uh, passing relationship Doom needs to be scary as F. Mm. Come book Bob continues, says, I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, I don't know who he was talking to. Uh, John Dillard says, uh, uh, they are trying too hard to bring the boring, dusty old Fantastic Four comic continuity into the world that doesn't care about him. Mm. Fair point. Aaron uh, Pohara says, uh, you guys uh, didn't like Cloud Galactus. No, Aaron. Uh, John continues, uh, comics should be fun, and the uh, FF uh, should be new and colorful and funny. Well, they tried that, and that failed too. Uh, John continues, a, a pox on Cloud Galact- Galactus. I agree, dude. Uh, John, uh, this is from Model 3. John, are you going back to gaming the system? <laughs> Cloud Galactus was bad. I'm sure Denali had a hand in it. Mm, possibly. He's against you today, against uh, again, Denali. John's agenda. Uh, I, well, because I know what his secret is, and he doesn't want me to reveal it. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, all right, this is what I think about the Fantastic Four and what they need to do with it. I think I do like the family line, and they and they should stick with that. But this is really what they need to do, and Doom, of course, is part of this. It needs to be a straight up horror. This is what the Fantastic Four, at its heart, is. And if you look at the last film, if you if you bothered to you know endure that, uh, you'll notice that the there is obviously two or three separate minds were involved in making that. Now, if you look at some of the scenes that were left in and most of the cut scene stuff, which you can't get a hold of, it was horror and it worked, right? It was the other crap they put in to make it lighter and funnier and all that other nonsense that screwed it up. 
they need to go pure horror with the Fantastic Four and have the, the family unit, the continuity of the family, become stronger and stronger during the story. That would be fun. That would be different. And that would be the Fantastic Four. Uh, but unfortunately, the people writing it don't understand it. Uh, because the Fantastic Four, I, I see what you're saying about the family continuity with the Incredibles, but they are not the Incredibles, though, dude. They are, that's not what they are. It's not a bad story. Well, they are in a sense that, you know, when they're when they're introduced, the whole big group adventure, family adventure thing was was hip in comics. You know, that that kind of genre of of sci fi was pretty hip and it's not and it hasn't been for a long time. So Mm -hmm. like they are passive, you know. So like the whole space Swiss family Robinson or the explorers like challengers of the unknown, that kind of story. That's what the fantastic four was with a family to dysfunctional family twist to me. I um, see. But horror, yeah. man, that, that's, that's a really cool idea, yeah. you know, cause you could really bang that out. I mean, yeah. Annihilus would be hor- horrific. There's so many elements to their, to their uh, lore. That would be really good for horror. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and I do agree, Model 3. It is getting uncomfortable looking at uh, Mr. Wu for so long. Uh, and do you think this is actually his real name, uh, Brian Wu? I don't I don't believe it. You don't look like a Wu to me. You don't, sir. You look like uh, John Lithgow. Anyway. Let me add something here uh, regarding Doom. If anyone wants to see the best portrayal of Doom uh, on the on any screen, you should look at the, I think it was season two of the Avengers cartoon. Oh yeah, they had Doc, they had Doctor Doom come into the storyline, all powerful, and he was untouchable. He came in, he did his thing, he gave uh, he gave Iron Man and everybody else a beat down, and then he just left. And he said, you know what, this is what you guys need to do to win to win your war. I am out of here. And they were all just left wondering what the what just happened. Yeah, this was this was Doctor Doom. This was the man who runs a country, who is a, a source of supreme, who is technolo- uh, technologically uh, as good or better than Iron Man. He just came in, ruled uh, the entire uh, his entire presence ruled the scene, mm-hmm. and then he left, and everyone and all the Avengers were going like, "What just happened?" Yeah, no, that it was, was, a, good, was, was, that was a good series, and uh, I, I I don't agree with one point, though. He's not on par with uh, Tony Stark. He's on par with Reed Richards. He's way above oh, Tony Stark. Yeah, Tony that's, is that's, uh, that's, kind of mid-level that's, genius, that's, right? I, I am corrected. I stand corrected. Yes, Reed Richards. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Doom is like Reed Richards, Tony Stark, uh, Re, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Dr. Strange, all put together, and just yes. yeah. uh, all sorts of awesome. You know where else he was? The Doom was actually very, very cool. Was the um, uh, the uh, DC Universe Online the the uh, the initial the iteration of the uh, of the game uh, was all about Doom. It's changed now, but uh, um, it was all about Doom and his uh, uh, not DC Online. Um, what was the one? It was a, a Marvel game. Um, didn't know, what was the name of that uh, Marvel video game? You could play all the different characters. The Alliance. Was it Alliance? Marvel Alliance. Yeah, remember. Marvel Alliance. Uh, but may, maybe a Marvel Alliance. But that one had Doom as the main protagonist as well, uh, or excuse me, antagonist. Um, and uh, it was really well done. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, uh, uh, once again, uh, often we look at the animation, particularly for DC, they do it a lot better than live action. You would think they pay a little bit more attention. Uh, like the Justice League, right? That absolute disaster of a movie. If you, if they had simply done a live action version. Of the animated one, it would have been killer. I mean, come on, guys, pay attention. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. I, I think. Absolutely. I think Sorry. learning. No, no, no problem. I think learning a lot of. I think there's a lot of contract obligation involved that kind of restricts some of those things, so they can't do it par per par. Like, there has to be like const, uh, like something that the actors and guidelines that has to be be met and you know i've been noticing more and more as we're looking at these films that you know there's things that you know it's like why did they do that and then i realized oh it must be some kind of contract obligation that they have to fulfill 
for one reason or another. Yeah. I, I see where you're going. There's too many cooks in the kitchen when it comes to the feature films. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. well, and we made a feature film. You know, it's a very small group of people that are managing it. And, <laughs> and they manage it very well. Goodness gracious. Let me come back over here to the chat. Um, uh, Aaron says, am I the only one really excited to see what they do with the new mutants? No, I do. I thought the horror take on that looked kind of cool. And, uh, it does, I don't know what's happened. It looks like they're just dropping it uh, straight to DVD, as it were, uh, just dropping it on Hulu. Uh, but anyway, uh, Come Bug Bob says, they're a family, but they're somewhat of a dysfunctional family. Reed tends to f uh, forget or even neglect Sue. Uh, John is kind of a dick and butts heads with Ben, and Ben is the man and the monster. That's right. That's right. Uh, John Dillard, the uh, Mr. Wu, nice model three. Uh, John Dillard says, ha ha ha, John Lithgow. Uh, in the end, family takes care of each other. That should be the theme. Exactly. Uh, Doom needs to be scary as F. Yeah, dude, he does. Uh, Argos, or Bill here, you could just say this. Uh, <laughs> Sue is popping pills to deal with the reason re re collects. Funny. Uh, Chloe Grace Moretz as Doom. Uh, you, you can leave now, model. Uh, uh, DeWolf says, mid level genius. Chester's whack. <laughs> Doom is the smartest person on earth. Reed is a very close second. Doom is also one of the most powerful sorcerers. Yes, that's true. That was true. But now, uh, Riri Williams is way beyond Reed Richards and, and uh, Dr. Doom. Come on. Women power. They would love the science. Uh, thank you, Ultimate Alliance. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Diddler says, uh, Sue needs to check her expectations. Her happiness cannot come from her husband's Has happiness comes from relationship with the Lord one above all. <sighs> oh goodness. All right. Next Denali. Right. Casino Royale actress, Ava Green weighs in on the James Bond gender controversy. What does so, she have to say? What the article she says James Bond should always be a guy and that she he shouldn't be a woman because that's not what James and the author intended James to be. And there's specific reason that the author made him masculine. And if you want a female, uh, then make it into a spinoff, into a different, you know, tell your another story, but doesn't have to be with James Bond or a legacy character like him. Yeah. Yeah, well, I agree with her, uh, but uh, once again, it kind of comes down to why do I care what you have to say, lady? Uh, it's like all these actresses, I mean, I might agree or disagree with you, but why do I care about your opinion? Why do I need you to weigh in on it? It's not like you're, ha you're carrying on a conversation with us day to day or week to week or month to month. You just pop in when you want to say something you expect us to care. And we see this with all these Hollywood celebrities. They just think they're way too self-important. If you want to have a dialogue, we'll sit down and have a dialogue, right? But it takes time to build up a dialogue. It's not something that just happens overnight just because you're famous and have a mediocre pair of uh, cleavage. Was not, was that, no, one, no one wants to comment on that. Just you know, leave me hanging in the air like that. Thanks, George. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, I just had to get a drink. I, sorry about that. Oh no! Well, so I've I've you. driven George to alcohol. I do apologize. Yep, yep, yep. Good yep. job, Chester. But I think you're when it says weigh in, that sounds more like a journalist trying to make yeah a clickbait thing. So it's not really her weigh in. It's basically a journalist or whoever asked her, "Hey, what do you think of that?" And she's like. Well, this is what I think. Boom. And, you know, okay. because but she's you a former Bond saying. girl. You know what I'm yeah. saying. You know what I'm saying. And they keep giving right. their opinion. They keep weighing in and stuff. And I agree with Eva. Uh, I, I agree with her very much. It's it, She's right. Uh, but uh, it's just, I don't care what a celebrity has to say. I just don't, dude. They haven't earned anything. Right. They're like the one of the least important things you can do in life is to be an, an entertainer. And I am an entertainer. I understand yep. that, you know. I know my place, somebody, as it were. Somebody but you're important to us. Mediocre Chester's way. I guess Chester just whacked today, huh, DeWolf? Uh, but, uh, but anyway, thank you, Eva. I, I, I do agree. And uh, oh, that's not a good picture, dear. Oh, well. Next. Now, this one, this one is hilarious. 
Um, this one's from me. I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, the Pillars of the Earth yeah. developed uh, developer Datalik Entertainment advocates for refugee migration into Europe. Well, thank you once again for your opinion, game designer. Uh, it's just like, you know, um, I'm not going to read this whole article. It is kind of interesting. If you want to check it out, please do. This is on um, Bounding into Comics. It, it's a, it, you should give it a read, though. I suggest you go read this one. It's, it is an interesting one. But I, I, I think, um, you know, this is kind of our sort of realm of what we do here. But uh, once again, we have, you know, creatives giving their opinion on stuff. And it's like, no one asked you, right? I mean, uh, you, you're not creating a dialogue. Once again, it's a, if you, you have to have a consistent point of conversation on a topic in order for you your opinion to have any validity beyond your own community, right? And uh, this is just another example of some woke uh, liberal jerk or progressive jerk that wants to come out and, 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 and virtue signal. And this ver that's what it's all going on. Because even with Eva there, now that might have been simply an off-the-hand comment and she just responded, it could be. But it could easily be her virtue signaling to her own group, right? And it's like, you know, I'm just sick and tired of the virtue signaling. I'm just sick and tired of that because it's hurting people. And here's the thing. We know right well that this migration, this refugee migration is nothing of the sort. It is immigration, right? And these people are coming over looking for free stuff. And if it were actual refugees, you know, women, children, families, then it would be one thing. But that's not what it is. The vast, vast, vast majority, I mean, 80% of all those people that are flooding into Europe are young single men with zero skills zero that is what's coming into europe it's not refugees these are opportunistic uh, people looking for opportunity which in a way would make them migrants actually uh but uh, the situation in europe is absolute disaster german germany should be held accountable and uh, it's very nice that we're seeing countries like poland and austria and hungary and uh uh, Italy and Greece and these other countries starting to uh, fight back against this absolute insanity of the uh, authority in Belgium. Um, and I know this is very political and you may or may not know what I'm talking about, but uh, it's just shut up, dude. Shut up. I don't care about you trying to make yourself look good to your buddies. G go straight to hell. That's my opinion. Oh, uh, Chester, what are, you, what are you trying to say? You know, don't hold back. No, I'm not going to, because it's nonsense. It's hurting people. I mean, we, we, we've, we've gone from, Swe like Sweden, for instance, uh, being a, a, a country that had very low crime rates across the board. I mean, lower than America. And to be fair, the crime rates in America are pretty low right now, uh, comparatively uh, uh, to some of the really hot spots in the world. And Sweden now is one, one of the rape capitals on the planet because of this refugee crap, right? And and uh, it's just this absolute nonsense. The blackouts they put on the media, you can't dare talk about any bad thing a migrant does. And, of course, it's the, now we're seeing the, uh, the uh, pushback. This yellow vest thing, which is economic in its in, in initiation, is much broader than that. People are sick and tired of what's going on. And the, and the problem is you have a lot of people in America, uh, politicians, progressives, that want to make America the same thing. And we and, and you guys over there can't let that happen. You cannot let America become overrun by the handouts. Uh, and you need to be, uh, uh, you know, inundated by those who want to come and improve themselves and take advantage of the the hub, the, the cultural hub that uh, America has become. And that's what America always was. But now what's going on is not a good thing. And, and we don't want to see it go the way of Europe, like uh, Canada. Canada is a good example. Uh, Justin Trudeau is an absolute jackass. And what he's done to that country is hurt them. And, of course, we have someone here from Canada, George. Uh, are you enjoying the reign of Mr. Trudeau? No. Uh, the, the gentleman, um, while well, he, he himself is a complete moron uh, and, a, and a complete sellout, and, a, and, a, and in my opinion, a complete traitor to the, the essence of Canada, and quite possibly the laws of Canada uh, and the security of Canada. Um, it's it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to see what's going on. We have 
here in Toronto alone, we have multiple hotels that have been now converted to be 100% housing refugees. Yeah, that's right. Okay, economic refugees, not, not real refugees, okay? And, and you know what's sickening is that we have homeless on the street mm -hmm. who are still yes. looking for shelter. And what we have also is the complete disregard of our laws, complete disregard of our borders. It, it is all around absolutely disgusting. It is. It, it's, it's terrible. But you know what? We're, it's not as bad as what's going on in Sweden, where they give you an armband that says, please do not rape me as a protection device. Right. Yeah, no, it's serious. Here. It's serious, and and this is coming out of the Muslim culture. Uh, the you know, uh, not even Islamic. Islamic culture. That's a whole conversation you can have. But the Muslim culture itself, because the problem with their book is this: they've never had a reformation, so that the book has its uh, has its a uh, lot layout that if you are not a Muslim woman. You are an animal. You are not human. Therefore, they can do whatever they want. The, the book doesn't say they can do anything they want. It's just simply by telling them that it is a lesser human, not not uh, Islam, is not human. By doing that me, is what they, they just ask, take it upon um, themselves to just rape whatever they want, right? It's a problem. I, I, need, to, I need to interrupt and correct you a little. I'm sorry for this, but mm -hmm. the problem is the ideology of Islam, it's not Muslims. There, there, are, there are plenty of Muslims who are very respectful. Of course who, there are, dude. That's <laughs> obvious. Don't, don't, don't virtue signal on me, George. Don't do it, dude. Okay. We all uh, know, uh, okay. we're well aware that not, uh, not all. We're, we're well aware not all. Of course not. The majority okay. of people in, in uh, Islam are good people, right? The problem is 27% of them aren't. That is a huge percentage, dude. Nowhere near any other culture that you can name. Absolutely. I get that, it dude. I get, I get it. But I don't need the not all crap. We know it, dude. This is okay. what SCWs no, do, right? It's a very passionate subject, I understand. It is. And, yeah. Excuse me for trying to correct you. I, I didn't mean to overstep you. No, 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 dude. I, I, I probably reacted too hard to that. But it's just because I hear that all the time. And it's like, of course it's not all. Of course it's not all. But we're talking about a real problem. And it's a serious problem. And the Americans really aren't completely aware of it. You have a much better insight into it than they do. Because you can see it on your streets, right? Um, you, want, you, want me bring it home? Yeah. you want me to bring it home regarding um, the ideology of Islam in comic books? Um, ju uh, ju not just too long ago, there was a, a great Muslim creator. I forgot the gentleman's name, but anyone can look it up on Google. The 99, it was, the, it was a, com a comic book yeah, series. I read that. It was very yeah. big. It was very popular. It, it, it went stratos stratospheric real quick. DC was going to do a big, uh, you know, uh, team up and crossover with them and all that stuff. And then it disappeared. Yeah, unfortunately, and there, and there was it was a good book, a good idea. Yeah, yeah. It was, there was a reason why it disappeared. Why the ideology? The uh, they were basically told, if from my understanding, from everything I've read, uh, the uh, the creators were basically told not to do this because it goes against the grain of the established ideology. Yeah, sure. That may, it's unfortunate. It was a good idea for a book, though. Uh, but you can get some copies of stuff, and they were trying. He was trying to introduce a, an entire universe. It's called the Ninety Nine. Go check that out. Actually, it was pretty cool. And I do apologize, George. I I, I shouldn't have snapped at you like oh, I, that. I, but... I, 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 me too. I apologize too. I, it's a very uh, heated, touchy subject. I understand that. Yeah, it's just. And I it get, also makes. I get that all great, the time. Uh, yeah, it also makes great speculation for the uh, our chat here to listen to us. <laughs> I suppose so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's move away. Yeah, from I should, maybe I shouldn't. But, but... I think Denali was right. Yeah. You shouldn't cover that, Chester. All right, you were right. Fine. <sighs> <sighs> or, or, or next time we'll say pencils at ten paces, sir. Exactly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go watch a trailer. That's gonna make us feel better. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. I don't. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Coming off of that rant and passion speech. Um. <laughs> Maybe not, but, but but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll it's see. Gotham. Well, it, it's I, Gotham. 
yeah, it is Gotham, and uh, but it's that is a hot topic conversation. That take to be honest, it's not something you a conversation you should have just in a small segment like that. If you're going to talk about it, you need to talk about it broadly because it is such a broad and complicated uh, 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 situation. But uh, anyway, let's watch a trailer. Bane Red Band trailer for Gotham. And, and maybe it's going to be awesome. It could be awesome. It could be. I mean, it can't be as bad as uh, Batman 3, right? I mean, there's no way, right? You mean Batman 4? Uh-oh. We had, okay, we had the teaser for the trailer. Now we're, good, we're ready. We're ready to go. Okay, here we go. After the bridge was blown, so the government stupid. declared Gotham off the limits. The city was given over to criminals, murderers. Doing no mental land. I'm working on getting okay. you help. Just say we're on our own. I know you sold the RPG that took out Haven. I want to know who bought it. What do you say, boys? Do we oh, show God. this lawman how I feel about uninvited uh -oh. guests? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's a Robocop moment. It's a Robocop moment. I would make the tune, but we probably get copyright strike. <laughs> Eduardo, nice shot, right? You left the army for this city. You know, while this trailer is funny, I only have one thing to question in this Shock world of God's own. Shock and awe is my Where the hell is the government? Why can't they do martial law? Take care of the crime? Because they're corrupt. Did you destroy Haven? I guess. The truth. Sometimes you just have to clean house. You'd kill me for some bureaucrat. Mission comes first. You told me that. I mean, could have been like old times. Making the world. It made a sense in the comic because there was other natural disasters, and they gave up on Gotham. My warrior, when this event so occurred, we actually reviewed one of the comic books. I uh, intend to give it. you a true purpose and the strength to see it through. Are they gonna? Are they gonna bait him up? Are they gonna do it? Are they gonna do it? We'll be agonizing. Apologies. It's a lie. Come on, give us a reveal. Give us a reveal. Oh. Well, let me meet Bane. Oh no. Oh no. No. Where's that no. poison ivy? Not anymore. The world is full of monsters. The only way to defeat them is to become one. I see you guys are sorry. How are you? Follow some tropes. So what he gives he gives Gordon venom. Well, I I uh For those who never read the comic book, all of this is awesome. But for those that have seen it, it's crap. Wow, it makes us tear our eye out. I don't, I don't really blame them uh, for not having a, a, a better costume. I mean, it's expensive to CG it, right? Oh, they couldn't put him in a muscle suit? I mean, they did it with Shazam. Yeah, but those muscle suit costs one million a piece. Holy Yeah. Hmm. Isn't that boy getting up in age? Isn't he getting close to we're going to see Batman actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, involved in things soon? I mean, how old it's is that boy? He, he's in yeah, the, 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 this, this season of Gotham is basically Batman year one. Right. Yeah. Um, well, no, it, it seems... Um, uh, it, it also seems to be a take on No Man's Land, like uh, Denali had said as well, though. Um Yep. Yeah, and I, I'm just curious if we're going to see Batman because the boy's got to be an adult now, or at least adult size. I mean, they're I gonna do it, but it, but it's gonna but it's gonna be like Smallville. You see him oh, in the true. suit in the very last episode in the very last second. Probably, yeah, you're right, you're right, yeah. Uh, but I don't know, I don't know. I mean, it's the actor they have doing it. He seems fine, I and mean, because Bane's not an idiot, right? A lot of times they portray him this way, but uh, he's a very clever fellow, uh, which is the one thing I liked about the um, uh, what was his name? Uh, who uh, who's the guy who played uh, Bane in the uh, uh, oh, oh, the movie there? Um, I forgot Tom his name. Hardy. Tom Hardy. Yeah, that's the one thing I did like about it. He made <laughs> Bane smart. Uh, I just hated the costume, uh, really, and the whole but, but he, voice and all. But that. he made him British. <laughs> he yeah, made I know. Him British. He should have been Brazilian. He's... Well, he's not Brazilian, but 
I thought he was from but Brazil. Get... Isn't Bane from Brazil? No. No. Yes, yes, yes. Santa Prisca or something made up island. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! You know what? We can. You know what? We can ask Chuck Dixon. We can Chuck, tell us where. Yeah. Yeah, we could. We could. We need to talk to Chuck actually. Um, yeah. Let's see. The chat have anything to say here? He's about eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, he's getting up there. Uh, Diller says, looks whack like Chester. Thank you very much. There's a new meme coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, why is Gotham still on? I don't know. I, I stopped watching after season one or two. Uh, but It's um... supposed to be the final season. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But you know you know what's crazy is that this actually didn't get canceled, unlike a lot of other Fox sh uh, genre show like uh, Firefly, Sarah... Mm -hmm. Chronicle, uh, Sarah Connor, Chron uh, Terminator Chronicles, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it must have a following, yeah. you know. And it, it looks like if this is the uh, final season, that they uh, they might actually be rolling over into Batman Year One. That that would be cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I check it out. I don't. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Model Three says, yeah, especially if they like have a. They have it in an established uh, universe and everything. So, I mean, it could transition. We'll see if they'll actually move it into that. They could, yeah. Um, but I gotta say, a lot of his a lot of his best villains are already done and killed, aren't they? Yeah, they killed the Joker like it. four times. <laughs> it's like every other. It's like all the Jokers are this one guy's family. You kill my brother, my twin brother, my half twin brother. <laughs> That's a jump the shark moment right there. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, um, you know, the Joker always puts gas for sharks, so it wouldn't be that off. There you go. Off yeah, Batman. You get out of shark repellent. Now we do have a couple of interesting little stories we want to cover quickly before we finish up for today. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce this one? I think this is a cool idea, actually. All right, so. They are reporting that um, Disney is developing an anime series on the What If uh, storylines for Disney Plus. It's going to be part of the, you know, Disney Plus uh, streaming services. So, hey guys, if you join now, you're going to see these What If storylines that Marvel's been yeah. throwing out throughout the years. Yeah. Now, uh, they did pick a couple of ones here to look for us to look at that are a bit, a, a bit interesting choice. Uh, this one right here, what if Loki had found the hammer of Thor? Um, this doesn't make sense to me right off the bat because uh, first of all, Loki's not going to have to find the hammer. He knows all about it. And uh, of course, it's about being worthy. Uh, so I, that's an odd one. Uh, this one over here, what if Spider-Man joined no, no. the Fantastic Four? That's interesting. No, no, that that what if is basically when the hammer was destroyed and you had female Thor run. Oh, so this is a newer one, huh? That's why I don't recognize it. Mm. I see. Um, but, <laughs> ooh, some disaster is happening. But there is, um, uh, yeah. there there are a lot of really good what if stories. I think having a TV series like that, uh, I think, would be fun actually. And it and, and and more to the point, one of the problems we have with a lot of these shows is they try to tell these long arc stories, right? And they fail miserably at it. Having a show that is built on one shots, meaning each episode, and, and even possibly having different directors take a uh, shot at each one is, is going to be a lot tighter storytelling, right? It's going to be better storytelling. So I think this is a cool idea, actually. Well, the reason why they're doing... Go ahead. Just like the Twilight Zone. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's an animated ver uh, uh, series as well, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that, actually. I, I think it'd be yeah. fun. Well, what I was going to say is the reason why they're doing that is because they saw the how successful um, Batman the animated series, which is they told an overarching storyline for each season, but they made it, but they didn't know how to make it stand alone, which uh, Batman the anime series was able to do you know mm -hmm. like you could watch it in any order but you know eventually you see a thematic uh, theme for every season what they were sure. going for yeah no uh, hopefully this will be a successful thing um, and uh, thank you very much for the piano playing guys uh, model 3 that's just mean don't be mean model 
Who's playing piano? It's Bill. It's definitely Bill. I blame Bill. Yeah. Uh, uh, here we go. This will be the last one we talk about today. Uh, we did have a thing on Shang-Chi, which, you know, that's cool. We'll talk about that as that develops more. Uh, but uh, this right here, let's finish up with this one, uh, Danelli. Right. So Ron Tomato Mole's further tidings of user guidelines to combat trolls. What they're thinking of implementing is some kind of verification um, step where mm-hmm. – uh, the user has to verify that they actually went to see the movie to actually review it. So you have no ticket, no review. I don't know how they're gonna. I don't know how they're gonna implement that. But, I know. But but basically, a lot of the trolls, man, they're 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 everywhere. They keep coming. We gotta stop them. Yeah, you know the funny thing because, is. When uh, you go take a look at these trollings, which is going on, um, and what you do, what they did was, is they cut fifty thousand uh, uh, rating one uh, reviews, and those people were, for the most part, probably just trolling, right? But they didn't then go ahead and cut all those tens as well, because no one in their in their right mind is going to call this movie a ten. So the tens are just as much trolling as the one is a trolling. It's this little battle, this tit for tat between these people. And uh, you know, Rotten Tomatoes just show showing their slip again uh, by cutting out the ones but leaving the tens, right? And even with that, right. it's still not a good score. So it's wow. you know, it's uh, you know, it's silly. It's uh, it's propaganda. These people are absolutely bought and sold. Uh, and for a review uh, web page, it's done. You're done. I will never use Rotten Tomatoes. I will never support them. I don't care what they have to say. They are dead to me. And, I, and I'm not alone. Not at all. Because they absolutely destroy their credibility. So they can do whatever silly things they want. It just goes to prove the point. Really. Yeah. But the point what we were talking about is the people who are not deep into what, how we're looking into it, how we're critical thinking, they're going to continue using that. And that's the reason why the system will continue because they're, they don't know, they don't realize and they don't really care. They just want a good entertainment. It's just going to be a hassle. And I think, I think it's going to get to the point where when it's actually going to affect them is when, you're going to have to make normal people do extra steps to do something simple. The ease of user use, you know, there's a limit of, is this worth it? And if it isn't, that's when you start seeing mass uh, waves of people just not caring anymore. And I don't know if it reaches, has, uh, it's going to reach that yet, but if they continue in that path, um, we'll see, uh, Ron Tomato go the way of MySpace. Yeah, no, no. It's I think it already has, and uh, I think people have already come to that conclusion. Um, and uh, you know, there's a couple comments here from the chat that are very, uh, very good. Yeah, Night Pope says, "Gotta go. Take my math midterm. Wish me luck." Well, good luck to you over there in California. Oof, cat is yep. in here. Uh, hello, cat. And um, uh, let's see here. Dillard says, "So what about the shill media?" Uh, who gets it for free? Must they present papers? Mm, sounds kind of like it. Uh, Comic Book Boss says, funniest thing uh, was when they did that, it only moved it by 3 to 4%. Yeah, and you know why? Because this movie is not progressive enough for the progressives, so they're not giving it good reviews. And it's too progressive for uh, the conservatives, so they're not giving good reviews. And then for the rest of us in the middle, it's not a great movie, so it's not getting great reviews. Uh, so it, it it doesn't really matter with a small percentage of people who are putting ones and tens down just to make some kind of statement of some kind. Uh, it's because it's just a mediocre movie, and that's the end of it. Uh, so, you know, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was funny, uh, comic book, Bob. Um, let me see here. <clears throat> uh, Model Space Med Media is in a bad shape across the board. Yeah, it is. Uh, D- Dillard says, Denali wants to know what all this has to do with, oh, goodness gracious. <sighs> Model 3, uh, Model 3 says 54,000 reviews removed <laughs> and it went from 32% to 36%. That's right. Cool. All right. Anyway, guys, uh, uh Bill, do you have any comment on this, man? I have to finish playing this song first. I'll be right back. God, he's playing his piano. Um, 
George, you have any <laughs> no, comment that's on my this? kid downstairs. You can't oh, stop her. Yes, she's, yes. she's a um, genius. I started. I started seeing um, people talking on the social media that there's whole theaters that are empty. Yeah, tickets have been purchased, but no one's showing up. Well, uh, there um, is a uh, conspiracy. Oh, <laughs> wink, wink, TFT. Um, but that. Uh, uh, some company, <clears throat> maybe Disney, went and bought a bunch of tickets uh, to make the sales look higher. Uh, and, uh, of course, no one's there because those tickets were bought by Disney. Um, uh, this is a conspiracy that's going around. Uh, I have no clue. I do know there's a lot of photos and videos showing empty movie theaters, however. Uh, so that's an interesting thing. But um, Disney's desperate to save this because they've never had a failure with Marvel. Uh, and this is their first. It's not, I don't even think this is technically actually a failure, uh, but it's not doing well as far as the talk. Because uh, for the most part, even with uh, Wakanda, which that movie should not have been called Black Panther, it should have been called Wakanda. Um, but the, even with that movie, uh, there's not a lot of real hate toward it. It's more of, you know, people are being ironic and it's like, yeah, OK, uh, nonsense. Uh, but it's not a lot of hate. This movie's getting a lot of emotional response. Um, and I think uh, it's uh, it's panic Disney a bit. Uh, what do you guys think? You think they might have actually done that? Do you think they actually went and spent who knows how many millions of dollars to f to uh, buy tickets to fill fake uh, theaters? Do you think they would do that? That's expensive. I think so. Well, actually, no, not really. If you think about it, uh, since it's opening uh, weekend, the 90 percent of the money is coming back to them. So their investment in this is actually very small. Yeah, maybe. Right. So yeah. basically they're they're paying themselves. Yeah, they're only they're, they're only losing 10 percent of the of the money that is spending to yep. bump up the stats. But do keep in mind that the money they get from the the international tickets is probably only uh, it's probably at best twenty percent, right? Um, but um, they're, yeah, not so, doing, uh, they're not doing it outside of the United States. No, no, they're not. He's talk, he's just talking about domestic box domestic office. Stuff, I think might, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. But I mean, that's a lot. That's a t another talk for Tim Foil. That's true. Yeah, Time. maybe we should uh, mention that on the TFT this week. Uh, Comebook Bob says, yeah, I got a free ticket, so I saw it. Uh, did a review for it on my channel. Awesome, dude. Go check out Comic Book Bob's channel. If you want to put a link up to it, dude, go right ahead. Uh, put the link up. I'll make sure it gets through. Um, uh, John Diller oh, says... Also, oh, sorry. I want to bring this back to actual comic books. Something similar like this happened with Cowboys and Aliens, where the publisher... Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, did this circle jerk a, a, a scenario with comic book stores instead of movie theaters? Well, really, where he where, where, where he paid where he paid comic book stores to uh, to buy his book? He literally uh, and so that way he can bump the stats up in Diamond. Let's say this is a uh, this is a number one selling comic book, and that's how he got his movie made. He tricked Hollywood into it. That's interesting. Yeah, but I like that movie though. I, I enjoyed Cowboys and Aliens. That was fun. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, John says uh, George is an SJW incel, far left, ideologue, fascist, antifa goon. I like George. <laughs> no, how did you know? <laughs> no, that's no, my fault, you... dude. That's my no, fault. Blame no, me. I... Blame no, me. Bad Chester. Bad Chester. <laughs> Uh, comic book Bob says the theater I went to was two thirds empty and that was on Thursday night. Yeah. I, I've been hearing a lot of that. Uh, Nick W says RT, uh, uh, manipulation, empty seats and 70% drop. Yeah. Something's up. Yeah. I think they're just panicking. They don't want to have, uh, I think this movie was probably didn't do as well. Um, uh, and uh, they're, they're just trying to cover it up because they don't want to have a failure and they also don't want to have their, their first female led film, which in the, in the uh, current mcu it is um they don't want to have that uh be at the bottom of the pile uh you know so i i, I get i i get what they're doing uh model three they should be losing around 40 percent of buying their own tickets yeah yeah well maybe it's not about money i mean disney's got a lot of money and uh may, this might just be purely political driven because we do know disney has a lot of 
you know, feminists and uh, progressives involved in that, that company. Um, like, for instance, we see with Amazon, right? They brought in, a, they had a, uh, bosses that were in charge of their movie uh, division. They, and they got kind of me too in nonsense way, but a little bit me too Then they brought in that salt lady, and uh, she's just cut everything male-led, including Conan, which sucks. Um, and uh, now she's going all female all the time because she's a big old uh, giant SJW. Uh, so, you know, this is happening all over the place, right? Um, and, uh, you know, that might be what's going on. Uh, I don't think it was Disney per se, uh, but ideologues who want to push their agenda. I can see SJW nutjobs rationalizing spending money to uh, pad the numbers. And no, it's possible, but we've noticed that SJWs don't seem to spend money on anything, though, dude. Uh, John Dealer says, Chester, you know the money from the domestic take of Captain Marvel is Denali. Ha- oh, goodness gracious. <sighs> Uh, sorry for the impromptu con- a concert has begun in my house. Going to drum. Cool, dude. Have fun. Um, that was from uh, Bill. Uh, Comic Book Bob says, in a nutshell, it wasn't the worst movie I ever saw, but not great by a long shot. Uh, I put it above Iron Man 3 and Thor 2, but nowhere near the top of the MCU. Uh, it has a meh film. Yeah, that's that's what it seems. Yep. Uh, Draken says, yeah. uh, I just finished stream. Unfortunately, uh, uh, tricks started coming in repeating the N-word, so I guess I have to figure out how to keep people in check so they can't do that. Well, there's an easy way to do that, dude. You you you, you hide them on your channel. Uh, just, uh, you know, it's over. If you go to the chat and you go to the right of their uh, name, you'll see these three little dots come up. You click on that, you can uh, just boot them from your channel. Uh, Pixel Traders here, he says, uh, hello, Pixel. He says, Draken, you can block words in your admin, I believe. You can do that, too. You can do that. That's right. Uh, but uh, it takes a little bit of prep, but uh, it's not that big a deal. Just go into your uh, creator studio and uh, you'll be able to find the area where you can uh, uh, decide what words and what things you don't want to be said. Uh, so, And then your moderators will be able to handle it from there. Uh, anyway, whew, take a breath. Denali. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I'm assuming uh, I've lost Bill because Bill is going to have a, have a concert <laughs> with his uh, kid, which is cool. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, um, I mean, for Captain Marvel, everything that everybody's saying, it's a, it's a forgettable film. I think it would it probably would do better if it wasn't for the whole um, Brie Larson talking about her comments. She wasn't diplomatic you know, in the way she phrased things and it riled people up, making it worse than it seems. And yeah. Disney is panicking because they don't want another uh, Last Jedi uh, issue. You know, even though they're not acknowledging, they're acknowledging that they screwed up because they're making all these changes and, you know, they're doing all these things and they don't, they're going to, be playing that hard. Watch the next, the upcoming marketing when it ramps up for um, episode nine. And I think it's this year, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 So shift watch it. Soon. Yeah. Yeah. So once um, End Games ends, they're going to be hitting us hard with, you know, watch the last episode. Oh, the Skywalker saga. Watch, you know, how a strong woman will bring everything to a epic conclusion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And again, it's going to be the optics that's going to turn people away, not the movie itself. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no. Uh, and uh, is she just, if she shut up, it would have been fine. Uh, I do see over here that uh, Comic Bob is telling us that uh, Nasser's Indiegogo just hit 10,000 is now funded. Yeah. Congratulations, Nasser. Good for you, dude. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Um, And, of course, that brings us to the end of our show today. We went a little bit over, but that's all right. Uh, Do keep in mind that about 45 minutes, the pro edition of Drone Recorder is going to be on uh, um, Blacklist Universe, which is Mike S. Miller's channel. I'm not sure what the theme is today, but definitely go over there and check that out and give some support. Also, keep in mind, we have several projects going on, not only Nasser's. uh, We also have George's Joe King is going on over in Indiegogo, uh, which you can find through IndieCron, of course. Uh, And uh, you also have uh, Brad's Handyman. 
uh, as well as the Tales from Beyond the Gate and many others. Uh, there, and there's a lot of really cool looking upcoming stuff too. Uh, things are starting to tick up for 2019 and uh, we're going to see some really cool projects. So uh, I'm excited uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, backing all these things and we hope you guys are too. Uh, George, Let would me... you like to take a moment and uh, yes. talk about your project a little bit? Yes, thank you. Um, if you back the project, not only do you get uh, five original illustrations at any uh, perk level that you support, but again, any perk level you support, you'll get a full set of oversized trading cards included at no additional cost. Whew. Yeah. The, these actors are going to be stuffed. Yeah, no, that's cool, dude. It is. Um, so, yeah, all right, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to get out of here and let you guys have a break so you can go to the Pro Edition. But uh, as always, thank you very much. Uh, for joining us and supporting us. Sorry for my little bit harsh rant, and I do apologize to George. Uh, there was no need for me to uh, snap at you like that, George. But, uh, yeah, I do uh, get, I'll I get real Chester. sensitive about that stuff. <laughs> it... <laughs> Likewise, Chester. It, it, it was a nice spirited conversation we had. Again, I, I, I still say pencils at, uh, at 10 paces next time. That's right. you got to win, though, because I, I can't draw worth nothing. I'm worse than Booster. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, George. And Denali, man, take us out of here, dude. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us for Comic Sneeze today. We'll see you tomorrow for another Comic Sneeze today. And uh, and if you guys can't back our projects, make sure to share it out on Twitter and Facebook and to your other people. Uh, that also helps support us, and we would greatly appreciate that as well. Uh, we want to make this into us the big success it uh, can be, and you know we are confident that that it will happen. But we can only do it with your support and you know your approval. So thank you everybody for joining us. But as always, your perception shapes your reality. So always make it a good one. Namaste. Namaste. Later, guys. Yeah.